Welcome to Sports Sunday. I'm Brooke Rimsley. The Cardinals coming back home to Bush Stadium this weekend for a National League Central showdown against the Brewers. They went into Friday's game with just a half game lead of the division, but thanks to strong pitching and the red hot bats of Nolan Arnato, Paul Goldschmidt, and the future Hall of Famer Albert Pujols, the Redbirds were able to make a statement in the series finale today while also creating some more separation in the standings. Top of the second, Hunter Rinfro hits one out to deep center. Carlson can't grab it. Two run homer gets the Brewers on the board first. Bomb the second. Albert Pujols gets one out of here. Solo shot all the way to Big Macland. That's home run number 688. You better give the people what they want to. A nice curtain call there for Pujols makes it two to one cards. Bottom of the six. Tyler O'Neill at the plate. Deep fly ball to center. We'll see you later. That is a solo shot. It is two all now. Top of the eighth. Michaelis strikes out Caratini. He made it through eight. Four hits, two earned runs. Runs, no walks and six strikeouts. Bottom of the eighth, Dylan Carlson cranks one to deep left field. That is a goner. Solo shot gives the Cardinals the lead at three to two. Same inning, pool holes at the plate again. You betcha. He just blew the top off the place, even though Bush doesn't have one. 63rd multi homer game for pool holes. Ties Willie Mays for six all time. Three run shot, and that's home run number 689 for number five. Rowdy Telez did have a late homer, but it doesn't matter. Cars win this one at six to three. They also win the series pool holes with a great and well thought out answer to if home run number 700 is in the back of his mind. Here's what we had to say about that. It is in the back of my mind because I don't think about it. So it's behind me. <laughs> it, it, is, it is behind me. So I don't, I don't, i tell you the truth. If it happens, it happens. I think, uh, I'm blessed with the career that I have, and if God has that in store for, for my career, then I'll be totally more blessed. But uh, if it doesn't happen, I think uh, anybody around um, can agree with me. It's been an amazing career, amazing run, so I don't, I, I don't think about it, to tell you the truth. What I think about it is anytime I'm out there in the lineup, just try to do the best that I can to help this ball club to win. And whenever I don't, just try to be the best cheerleader, you know, and be ready. Uh, to try to come up and pinch it, you know, if it, my name is Cole. And, and that's it, that's my main focus. I um, didn't thought about it 100, 200, 300, 500, 400, whatever it is. I just go out there and play, and whatever happens, happens. I think uh, after, by this time next year, I'm going to be thinking about what I have accomplished in this game. But for me, I just don't think about it because I'm still an active player, and, you know, I don't want to take that for granted at all. I'm just blessed, you know, with the talent that I have, and I just put a little extra work, extra, and, and just try to execute, you know, and have fun. This weekend also marked a special moment for one of the greatest teams in Cardinals franchise history. It was the 40th anniversary of the 1982 World Series championship team. More than 20 former players, along with manager Whitey Herzog, received the royal treatment at Bush Stadium on Saturday, arriving via a motorcade parade. It's only right that the celebration was held when the Cardinals were hosting the Brewers because it was 40 years ago that these Cardinals defeated the Brewers in the World Series. That team featured multiple Hall of Famers and guys who would go on to play on other championship teams. On Saturday morning, players spoke about what made this team so different. It all begins with their manager, Whitey Herzog. I know our home games uh, in the clubhouse, he used to say before the game, okay, boys, get me 10 singles. You know, hit the ball on the ground. You don't see that anymore today, right? And uh, that's what we do. But yeah, and then I think from his days in the Mets organization and just his baseball IQ, he really knew how to handle the bullpen. It was the greatest group of guys, 25 players, uh, that I, I played with. There was no egos on the team. And, you know, I played in New York and won in New York, and there was always a lot, a lot of high drama there. There was never high drama here in St. Louis. Everybody was pulled. It was a blue-collar team. That's what I, that's what I, I think that's the best description, just regular guys. No one wanted to hit the, the eight-run home run and get the headline. We all chipped away and, and helped each other, and it was really just a, a, a fun group. Jordan Montgomery once again dazzled on the mound Friday night, striking out eight and six innings of no-run ball in his first two starts. Get this, Montgomery has combined for 11 innings of scoreless baseball with 14 groundouts, just three walks, nine strikeouts, and six hits. It seems that the Cardinals' new pitcher is the missing piece that they were looking for. Under control, no panic, 
knows that if he executes, we'll be fine, and he did exactly that. So we got the right guys. They've made it easy. Um, this clubhouse is great. A bunch of just quality hearts um, and human beings left and right. So uh, they've, they've made it easy for me to fit in and um, kind of gone out of their way to help me feel welcome. While the Cardinals are out of town this coming weekend, sports fans will still have plenty to do across the river. They can pack Worldwide Technology Raceway for the annual Bomberito Automotive Group 500. This is always an exciting time of year with racing returning to the St. Louis area. IndyCar returns to Worldwide Technology Raceway for the sixth annual Bomberito Automotive Group 500 in preparation for the big event. The drivers of six IndyCar Series teams were over at the raceway this past week testing out their cars on on the oval IndyCar driver Kyle Kirkwood, who is sponsored by the Bomberito Automotive Group, says that this is one of his favorite events. I believe it's the second best oval that we go to because I can't say no to the Indy 500 um, or the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. But this is a great event. Uh, us drivers love coming here. We love coming to St. Louis. It's very convenient being close to the city here. Uh, we always get a ton of ton of fans and the promoters do an awesome job with it. So we're always happy to come back here. Well, they love St. Louis because here for them, the excitement of the fans. Remember, we're a sports town. I mean, we are an absolute sports town. We've got the world champion Cardinals. Okay? We've got the Stanley Cup winning Blues. We've got a brand new MLS team. And now we've got world-class racing in our hometown, Bomber to 500, and of course, a worldwide technology racer. Also coming soon, football season, just nine days into Mizzou's preseason camp. Head coach Eli Drinkwitz making the decision to name Brady Cook as the Tigers starting quarterback. The sophomore appeared in five games last season after taking over for a struggling Connor Basilak. Cook beat out East St. Louis's Tyler Macon, Mississippi State transfer Jack Abraham and true freshman Sam Horn for the job, a job that he considers to be a dream come true. Coach Drink also made it clear that Brady won the job not because he's an in-state recruit, but because of his talent and potential. I'm in a position right now that uh, I used to dream of, um, and I've really worked uh, my whole football career for this moment. So, I mean, it means so much. And just growing up and watching the Tigers and being from St. Louis, um, it means even more. So it's really special. I wouldn't say I was necessarily surprised, but just more overwhelmed with just it was like this fulfilling happiness kind of. Um, just something I've been waiting for and working for for a long time. So uh, when I got the news, I was uh, pretty excited about it. It matters to him to be the starting quarterback at the University of Missouri, and I'm excited that he's our starting quarterback. I know I can lay my head on the pillow knowing that he's going to give us and all these fans in this state everything he's got. Over at the Herbert Hoover Boys and Girls Club on Thursday night, four-star offensive lineman out of East St. Louis, Miles McVeigh, narrowed down his choices and picked where he's going to play at the next level. The junior had his list nailed down to the likes of Texas A&M, Alabama, and even Mizzou, but he made the decision to verbally commit to the Crimson Tide. Miles McVeigh said that he wanted to be a part of a winning culture, which is something that he's used to with the Flyers. I chose Alabama because it felt like home. You know, I'm. I've been around Coach Slunk my whole life, for real. You know, I watched the games in 2016 when Jeff Thomas was going off, and it's just been it's just been a culture thing. You know, my dad comes from East St. Louis, and it's just how he preaches and what he teaches at home. It kind of reminds me of Nick Saban, you know, being in Alabama. So that's kind of ultimately what it brought down. Coming up on Sports Sunday, professional golf returns to St. Louis soon with the second running of the Ascension Charity Classic. We look ahead to the big event coming up after the break.